But I know that if it's in your heart and if you are determined to make a change in your life, you can do it. There is nothing that's going to stop you except for yourself. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Joe Gets Asked Really Good Questions and then struggles to do the best that he can to answer those really good questions. In all seriousness, welcome back. It's great to see everybody. Hope everybody's doing very well. I had some fantastic, fantastic questions from one of the awesome subs of this channel. Guys, these are some really in-depth questions. Maybe you guys would have these questions but haven't thought of them. Highly recommend you check these questions out and then listen to these responses. In um, I was joking in the beginning of the video. I get asked great questions all the time, and I am privileged to be able to answer them uh, to the best of my ability. So please bear with me as I try my very best to explain the answers to these very good questions I received just the other day, all right? So first of all, the question was, will Tonal assign my starting weight based on previous progress or do I have to do that manually? And as an example, if I do chest on Monday at 60 pounds, by Wednesday when I come back to do chest again, is it going to be at 65 pounds or something like that? All right. So Tonal will assess, assign you your starting weight if Tonal is working correctly because sometimes there are some glitches. All right. You got to be patient with this machine. But um, Tonal should be assigning you your starting weight based on your previous progress. Okay. Now, that said, it does not mean that if you do chest on Monday and now all of a sudden you go ahead and do chest on Wednesday, you're automatically going to have an increase in weight. It does not mean that. Now, Tonal does a very, very good job at determining your weight in my experience, okay? In my experience. Again, sometimes there are some glitches when it comes to technology, okay? Maybe Tonal doesn't do a good job in someone's circumstance. If that was the case, I would say the machine needs to recalibrate your starting weights or you need to manually adjust the weight in order to find a good weight for you. And Tona will then, I think, catch on and be like, all right, this guy put it at this amount of weight. This is approximately good for him. He's now hovering around that weight and it's going to recalibrate itself. Okay. So to answer the second part of that question, which was, do you have to manually adjust the weight? Number one, you can manually adjust it if you want, but again, Tonal should be basing the fluctuation in the weight that it gives you determined on how good you did if you hit any PRs, you know what I mean? If you, if you got a new PR or if you're in the middle of a set, right, and you like skyrocket that 15 reps or 12 reps, whatever you're doing through the roof and instead of doing 15 or 12 reps that you put in to tonal, you do like 17 or 18, tonal is now going to up the weight automatically, if it's working correctly, up the weight automatically to crush you into that range um, that it feels is best for you based upon your strength at that time, okay? And it goes the opposite direction. If you're a little weaker, let's say you're not fully recovered, but you're you're working out chest again, Tonal should be automatically lowering the weight to bring you into a range that's comfortable for you. The whole point of this AI is to bring you into a safe working range, the most effective range that it feels you should be in, okay? So it basically takes the thinking out of it. You can absolutely manually do it, but it was built to be able to do it on its own, and it does a very good job, in my opinion. So I hope that answers that question well. The next question is, will Tonal adapt to your time under tension preferences? Now, listen, guys, everybody has different time under, uh, time under tension preferences, okay? Now, the user, the, the, the subscriber, asked, if I go ahead and I want five seconds on my concentric phase and then five seconds on my eccentric phase, will Tonal adapt to that or will it show that you're not doing good on your reps. All right, so let me try to answer that in the best way that I can. If Tonal sees that you're doing five seconds on a concentric, okay? Concentric, obviously, well, maybe not obvious. I'll, I'll explain it. Concentric is the upward portion of the movement. So on a bicep curl, this is the concentric. This is the eccentric, okay? For all of you that don't know. Uh, if you follow this channel, you definitely know what that is because we talk about it all the time. Um, so 
as far as the time under tension goes, if you're talking about a five second time under tension like this, that's a lot of time under tension for a concentric movement. Now, listen, I'm not telling anybody and I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. There is so much research out there. You're going to find someone who says, oh, yeah, do as much time under tension as you want on the key concentric. And then you're going to find a ton of research that says, no, you shouldn't be doing it. It should be fast and explosive and controlled. Guys, in my opinion, if you're doing five seconds on the concentric, that is way too long, way too long. If you want to specifically train like that, feel free, feel free, train however you want, whatever you think will optimize your training for your purposes and your goals. Everybody's goals and purposes are different. So you may have to change your training based upon that. But this user, this subscriber said that their goal is hypertrophy. Okay. So I've done a lot of research on time under tension. I've done, you know, and on my findings, you want your concentric to be explosive and controlled. Okay. That being said, the research shows from the research that I've done. Okay. Shows that whether it is slow and controlled five seconds versus let's say one second, right? It doesn't actually change the amount of of hypertrophy to the muscle cell, the muscle fiber, but, but there's a big button there. Okay. Remember, not a scientist, just telling you what I am aware of, what I try to keep in mind. And honestly, what I try not to think too much about, because the more you think about it, the more in depth you get and the more confused you get. And now you're not working on your reps. You're not enjoying your workout. You're more like, Oh, how many seconds was that? You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, when you go ahead and you do a slow and controlled up, you're actually recruiting less muscle fibers. You're not working as hard. So there may not be a huge difference in the literature on whether or not your muscle is growing substantially more. If you come up slow, there may not be that much um, change in the amount of muscle that you are potentially growing or destroying. But there is a huge difference in muscle recruitment. You're using less energy. You're using less fibers, the slower you come up. So therefore your hypertrophy, the time under tension might be more, but you're actually, you're actually using less energy. Your muscle cells, your fibers are requiring less energy to do what you're doing slowly. Okay. So from the literature that I've read, you want something normal, something, something normal. I'm bringing it back to stone age. Okay. Because I feel like sometimes science complicates things too much and then double the time on the way back on that eccentric, because that has been proven to destroy more muscles because you're stronger, you're stronger on the way down than you are up. So for example, if you're using a dumbbell, you might be picking up 50 pounds concentric, right? But when you come down that 50 pounds on that concentric might actually be a, more along the lines of like the equivalent of like what 30 pounds of weight might be doing to your fibers because you're stronger on the way down. Okay. So you have to keep in mind that with eccentric mode on tonal, you can change that by loading up on the eccentric. So you throw eccentric mode on, you do a nice controlled explosive rep up to get that weight up, get it up, get that weight up, use the energy it takes to cause a stimulus in your muscle. Because if you come up slow, you're not, you're not really fatiguing your muscle on that concentric, right? You're not conditioning your muscle for explosive movements, which is going to not help you later on. If you want to push a heavy weight up, the concentric is where you're going to push that heavy weight on like a bench press. Let's say you're not going to slowly pick up the bench. You know what I mean? And bring it down and slowly bring it back up. So without trying to confuse you guys, cause I'm not trying to confuse you guys. Long story short, my recommendation, your research, your goals may vary, may determine something different for you. But in my experience, research and opinion, explosive coming up, explosive and controlled reasonable, right? Taking it back to stone age, using our own brains for this reasonable, explosive up, nice, slow and controlled down. I would say probably if you're taking one second to come up, 
take about two seconds or three seconds to come down. And when you're using this machine, take advantage of the eccentric mode so that you can really destroy your muscles on that eccentric phase. You have more time under tension because you're bringing it down slow. You have more weight to make up for the fact that your muscle is stronger on that eccentric portion, okay? So to answer the second part of the question, will total show that you are under the goal line? The goal line, I'm assuming the um, subscriber is talking about the 80% peak mark on tonal. Um, if you are deliberately doing slow reps, yes, it will definitely go be under that mark. It'll be under that mark without a doubt because you're not explosive. Tonal recommends that you be explosive, okay? I think that's what most people would recommend. Most people, you're never going to find them tell you do a slow concentric, okay? But again, your training might be different. There's nothing wrong with that. So if Tonal is telling you to do explosive and you don't want to do explosive and you go ahead and you do your five seconds concentric and you don't hit that 80% peak power mark, does that mean that you should be like upset about that? No, that's your training. You use this machine how you want. This is your gym. You don't go into the gym and you're not like letting the dumbbells tell you what to do. You know what I'm saying? As long as you're safe, as long as you feel comfortable with what you're doing, as long as you have a purpose and a good understanding about why you're doing something, I don't see a reason why you shouldn't. So it will show that you're under that mark, okay? It's gonna show you have very little power, but is that necessarily bad? No, that's up to you. All right, so the next question is, can I program reps in reserve? All right, so reps in reserve, for those of you who are not aware, Reps in reserve is basically where, let's say you program Tonal 15 reps. Tonal is going to give you the weight it feels is best for you to get exactly 15 reps with good form and you're set, right? That's what Tonal is going to try to achieve from what I understand, okay? It does a very good job with that, in my opinion. It gives you your 15 reps and by the time you're done, you should pretty much feel like you can't do anymore. If you go ahead and do another one after your 15, because you're like, eh, I can do five more, and you do five more, Tonal will now increase the weight to crush you into a 15 rep range. It's like, Joe knows that he wants 15 reps, so I have to get him into that 15 rep. So it's going to do that, okay? You can't, as of right now, program reps in reserve. But guys, you got to keep in mind, reps in reserve is very, very much, it's very, very much personal, okay? So you can, somebody might like, one rep in reserve, two rep in reserve, three reps in reserve, right? You might like that. That might be something that you want. But based upon the set that you're doing, that's going to change too. Because you're you're fatiguing throughout that set. So Tonal, you can't do reps in reserve. Not yet. Maybe there's a way they can fit that in somewhere down the line. As far as I know, you cannot program that in. But I recommend if you are, are you if you're into reps in reserve, that's something that you want to do. I recommend you do it for yourself. Now, you can do that a couple of ways. One is knowing your body as best as you can, as best as you can. Because really, at the end of the day, are you really going to be able to tell like you're doing your reps and you're like, yeah, I know for a fact I have three reps left in me, so I'm going to stop now? You probably don't. A lot of the time, people have a lot more in them than what they actually think. So I recommend getting in tune with your body, testing your limits to learn exactly what, where you, you are on that scale of reps in reserve. That's my first suggestion. Okay. The second thing is you can manually adjust the weight for your preferences. All right. You can manually adjust it up and down by one pound increments. You can change it to whatever weight you want. have a certain amount of reps in reserve that I want. You can go ahead and do that, but keep in mind, keep in mind that tonal is going to ask you how many reps you want when you start an exercise, right? Unless you go into free mode and you don't have any, like you, you're just literally spitting out reps. There's a, there's a, a way to jump into free mode where you don't put in the amount of reps you want. If that's the case, you can do as many as you want and you can stop with your reps in reserve with, by your own, your own experience. Okay. With your own body. But in all other circumstances, Tonal is going to basically tell you how many reps do you want? You know, 
you want one rep, you want 30 reps, whatever. And it's going to try to adjust the weight to crush you into that range. If you want reps in reserve and Tonal's asking you how many reps do you want, my recommendation would be to do something along the lines of like jumping on tonal and putting in, let's say you want 15 reps, put in your 15 reps. Now you start plugging away your 15 reps. Since you know tonal is trying to crush you into that range, stop it around maybe 12 reps because that's three reps shy of what tonal is telling you. Okay. So if tonal is accurate, you can even test tonal, see if it's accurate. Do the 15. And by the time you get to the 15, say, all right. I feel like that was accurate for me, for my body. And Tonal did a good job, right? So now the next set, stop at 12. That's three reps shy. That would be three reps in reserve. That's what I would recommend. But do I even recommend you train with reps in reserve, guys? I am no authority. I'm no scientist, no doctor. I'm nobody special. But my opinion is I would not bother trying to uh, learn reps in reserve. I would just take things as close to failure as possible. And the reason why is because you're probably more than likely, unless you know your body extremely, like ex extremely well, you're probably going to be doing more damage as far as your progress, because you're going to think I have three reps in reserve. And really you're, you stop because you think you're at three, but really you're at like six reps in reserve. Total does an excellent job of getting you into a perfect rep range as far as weight goes. Okay. And for example, if you throw 15 reps and for some reason the weight's too heavy, right? And you can only get up to 10 reps, Tonal's going to change the weight. It's going to lower the weight so that you can now get that 15 reps. So it's basically doing the work for you. So do I think you should even concentrate on reps and reserve? In my opinion, absolutely not. You guys know the way I train is I take things to failure. So for example, I jumped on Tonal today and Tonal says, I don't, I don't even remember the exact weight. I'm so spoiled with, <laughs> with Tonal, but I think it was around 50 pounds, right? So I jump on to do bicep curl with like 50 pounds and I have a 12 rep, you know, range. 12 reps is what I want. I jump on with 50 pounds and if I'm able to do 52 pounds, I'm going to go ahead and do 52 pounds. Now Tonal is going to increase the weight. That shows me that I, I've grown. I've gotten stronger, right? So now Tonal adjusted it. And I will just do as many as I can until I'm comfortably done. So that's what I recommend you guys do. Let Tonal do the work. I wouldn't concentrate on too much on, oh, how long is my time under tension? You know, how long is my reps in reserve? I personally haven't. And a lot of you guys ask for my opinions on what I do because you guys like the results that you've seen that I have in the amount of time that I've had. And this is the stuff that honestly I'm not concentrating on. I'm letting Tonal do a majority of the work. I'm not losing my mind over numbers. I'm doing what feels good. I'm very natural, very old school, I think, when it comes to listening to your body. I think that's what everybody should do because science can overcomplicate things sometimes, okay? The last question is, wait, I think, so I think I answered everything. So just in case I didn't, you can't program reps in reserve, at least at this time. You can manually adjust that weight up or down by one pound increments. And you can manipulate, artificially manipulate the set range, you know, your, your, your reps per set. You can artificially increase them or decrease them based upon how many reps in reserve you're going to want. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Uh, but I wouldn't mess with it personally. Could I have made the progress without the accountability of having this channel? And the reason why this person is asking is because they want to create a channel um, and they want to have that channel for accountability. Now, Personally, guys, I recommend really thinking about whether the channel is for accountability or not. Um, and the reason why is because I don't think that that is enough to keep somebody going. When I started this channel, I started this channel because I wanted everybody to know how amazing this machine was. I didn't start this channel be like, I'm going to change my life and I'm putting it on camera. I didn't do that. So you'll notice I didn't take measurements in the beginning. I didn't really track progress too closely. All I really did was look at the scale and then come back to you guys with the scale. And as far as the muscle mass goes, you guys can physically see that it's changed over time. So I'm not taking measurements. I'm not holding myself accountable because of you awesome viewers. Now, does it make a difference knowing that I'm going to come on this camera and I'm going to be asked awesome questions like this and I want to look in shape when I come on this camera? Absolutely. But I don't think that's enough 
Because at the end of the day, if I was doing this to keep up with y the perception that you guys might have with me, if I decided that this is too much, I would just stop the channel. You know what I'm saying? I love working out and I love answering your questions. So that's why I'm doing this. But if for some reason I woke up one day and I was like, you know what? I feel like getting fat again. This channel is not going to keep me from doing that. When I started this channel, it was in my heart that I needed to fix the problems that I had as far as being overweight, fix the problems that I had with not being able to bodybuild anymore because of the whole pandemic thing. That's why I bought this machine. I bought this machine for that reason. And I, when I got this machine, I was like, oh my God, I have to tell the world about this because it is so unbelievably phenomenal. That's what caused this channel. And then people started asking questions. And that's when I was like, whoa, this channel is actually like growing. People are subscribing to me. I didn't know anything about YouTube. I didn't know about subscribers. I didn't know about, you know, you need a thousand subscribers and a certain amount of watch time in order to, you know, put ads. I didn't know anything about that stuff. And I didn't do it for any of that. I did this specifically for the viewer because I knew that this machine was special. And I said, I need to tell everybody how special this is because honestly, this machine doesn't have enough, you know, uh, enough uh, weight in society. Nobody knows about it. So basically, I was like, I got to tell the world. So that's what caused me to make this channel. Does the fact that I have to come on this camera and stand up here and talk to you guys when I get asked questions cause me to push harder in the weight room? No, because it's in my heart that I have a goal. I don't think... Anything is going to cause you to push harder except for what is in your heart, okay? What's in your heart. If you strive for something and you know you want something in your heart, you're going to do it. I don't think having a, a Facebook uh, page or a YouTube page is going to cause you guys to do anything harder or less hard, at least in my opinion, because of the person I am. It's not going to make me do that. If you're somebody who's like, I want to get the attention of the world and I want to become the next Arnold Schwarzenegger, that's another story. But as far as an average person goes, I'm an average person. I have not been pushed extra to achieve a more desirable fitness um, form of fitness because I have to come on this camera. If I ended up gaining 20 pounds... In the next months, which got, I hope not, because that's the last thing I want. But if I said, woke up one day and I said, this is too hard and I was gaining weight and coming back, I would still probably get on this camera if I was so inclined to help you guys and be like, yeah, yeah, I gained weight. It is what it is. But this machine's still amazing. You see what I'm saying? So anyway, I hope this answers your question. I really hope you guys appreciate this. Uh, these were some really specific, really fantastic questions. And I appreciate that they were asked because it shows that this person uh, this awesome subscriber has a lot of, a lot of passion, a lot of passion for what they plan on doing and what they are doing now. And I wish you the best. I wish all of you the best, but I know that if it's in your heart and if you are determined to make a change in your life, you can do it. There is nothing that's going to stop you except for yourself. Okay. Whether that's on tonal, whether that's with a max pro, whether that's with a handy gym, whether that is on a, some Nordic track machine, right? <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're going to achieve what you desire to achieve in one way or another way. You're going to do it, okay? So keep that motivation. Start those new habits because it all comes down to the habits at the end of the day. And keep that passion and that love and that goal in mind. That's the best I can give. All right, guys. Take care. Have a great day. And talk to you guys soon.